trust. Oh, goodness. Um, so what I've been asked to do today is to give you a brief overview of what's involved in applying for funding from City Bridge Trust. I'm going to give you an outline of our new funding programme for children and young people. And I also have a little bit of a surprise for you at the very end. So please stick with this. So um, before I get into the content, I do need to say, especially for those who are watching the recording of this presentation, that City Bridge Trust's funding programme is iterative. Therefore, we are learning and potentially adjusting the programme all the time. So what I'm going to tell you today is correct, but this isn't a source of information that can be relied upon as a reference for the longer term. So just to be aware of that. Um, what I do recommend you do is keep an eye on our website for the most up-to-date information about our funding programmes and the rest of the Trust's work. Next slide, please. Are you able to move to the next slide? Sorry. Or can sorry. I? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't know because you're not um, co-host, so you can, sorry, trying to, but it's not not moving not moving um, oh dear. okay let me try something sorry apologies i'm just gonna oh okay yeah i'm gonna share again so that oh, okay um, uh, there. Mm. right and that's the next one that's perfect yeah yeah shall i keep it like that so that i can definitely scroll down is that okay it's not slight show view but... as long as as uh, colleagues in the room can read the the slides are you able to see that can you give me a nod sort of yeah okay perfect thank you so much okay so what i've included here on this slide um, is details of our top line vision and mission statements which give you an indication of what we're trying to achieve through our work so as you'll see we're interested in addressing disadvantage and inequality so it goes without saying that demonstrating how your work meets these top line aims needs to be an important part of any application that you make to us we are a London focused funder um, and we're one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, funder awarding grants in the capital. Just as an aside, we don't only work in the area of grant making, we're also active in social investment, um, we do some proactive and strategic grant making, and we support the development of philanthropic practice, so namely through enabling volunteering and encouraging place-based funding initiatives. But I know that you're here to um, hear about our grant making, so that's what I'm going to focus on today. So next slide, please, Sarah. Lovely, thank you so much. So what I've included here is a list of the types of organisations that we award grants to. Um, the main point to remember is that organisations need to be charitable, although they can be constituted in different ways, um, as you'll see on the list there on the slide. All applicants need to have a set of accounts to submit with their application. If you do not submit a set of accounts, your application just will not get looked at. Um, there's no minimum or maximum size of organisation that we will fund. So don't be put off by that or the size of our funding pot at all. Sorry, what do you mean by set of account? A set of signed accounts. Um, that is your financial statements and a, a balance sheet. Okay. Yeah. Can I move to the next slide, please? I'll put it on my computer and um... thank you so much. I'm getting yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so um, applications to City Bridge Trust are submitted via our online application and grant management portal. There's an application form that you complete, and you also need to attach 
the documents that are listed on that slide. Can you see that? Because I appreciate it's quite small there. It's um, a set of accounts, as we've just discussed, uh, your governing document, safeguarding policy, project budget, monitoring framework, and any job descriptions that are more than um, 17 hours per week. Um, all of the information that you submit will be used as part of the assessment process, which is carried out by a funding manager like myself and Kate. Um, funding managers may contact you by email with questions. They may arrange to speak to you on the telephone, or they may contact you and arrange an assessment meeting, which could be in person or online. If um, your application progresses, um, it will undergo a financial and due diligence review, which involves your, fine, your funding manager, like myself, liaising closely with colleagues in our charity finance team. It's highly likely at this stage that you'll be required to do a bit more work, providing more detail or up-to-date information about your finances. Funding managers like myself, however, do not make decisions about your funding application. We work on behalf of senior staff and grant committee members who actually make decisions. Um, and the decision making process is slightly different depending on the size of your application. Larger applications go to grants committee meetings for decision and they take place in public. Next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. Um, so how much can you apply for? I know it's hard to decide when you're fundraising how much to ask for. Oh, I'm hearing myself. Oh, hearing myself. Can somebody turn their... Um... Lovely, thank you. Um, and I think it's particularly difficult because we take a range of factors into consideration as part of assessment. Um, and therefore, there isn't really a universal right or wrong answer to this question. We do aim to support full cost recovery, but we can't guarantee it. Um, however, I would say that we always expect to be contributing to your projects on costs. Um, we will fund one full time post or an equivalent full time as part of your application and we insist on funding salaries at the real London living wage. As um, included on this slide, which I'm not sure if you can see or not, we are happy to be a sole funder or a partner funder for your work. Next slide, please. I think there's another one before that one. Perfect, thank you. Um, so the best advice that I can give you is to really immerse yourself in the information provided on our website. There's a lot to digest there and it will probably take you longer than you think to find all the detail that you need. Um, a lot of applicants worry that their work fits more than one of our funding priorities. That really isn't something worth worrying about. The much bigger problem is if you don't fit at all. Obviously, it goes without saying, if your work doesn't meet our funding priorities, it's not going to be eligible. Um, so the onus is really on you to illustrate how your work meets our funding criteria. This doesn't necessarily need a lot of information. It just needs the right information. Um, if you don't understand the funding priorities, um, contact us. It's better to check if you're not sure. Having said that, there's a limit to how much help we can give you at the point of application. Uh, we can't give you an opinion about a project. We can't say it sounds good or it sounds bad. We can't read draft applications and we can't push your application to the front of the queue. There's also no advantage to offering hospitality or any VIP treatment at that point or at any point actually in a funding relationship. What you can do to make the assessment process as smooth as possible is to be ready to speak to your organisation's finances, your safeguarding policies and your operational procedures, because those things are definitely going to come up as part of the application process. Next slide, please. I'm going to try to resume the slideshow. Okay. Because um, you were saying that 
is quite small, so let's give it a try. Yes, it's working now. Lovely, there we go. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I've covered some, some general pointers so far uh, about our assessment processes, but now I'm gonna focus a bit more on our children and young people's program. Um, as I know, this is of interest to you. So next slide, please. I don't know if that works. <laughs> Obviously not. Um, I do apologise. No worries. What's on the next slide is just a list really of the other programmes that we have. Uh, you can easily see this from our website. Um, I'm not going to cover all of this information today. It's way too much and it will probably send you to sleep. But just to say, those are the other types of things that we offer funding for. Next slide, please. Lovely. Thank you. So our um, children and young people's funding strand is a recent addition to our funding program. We're very pleased to be funding in this area now. It's very exciting. And um, we are um, quite pleased to say that this is a well-defined um, funding program. Uh, we are offering support to three specific um, areas types of work the first being support for vulnerable parents and caregivers of children of preschool age the second is work with children and young people engaged in criminal exploitation and the third strand is work that addresses the needs of disadvantaged young women and girls and that's up to the age of 25. Um, we do not expect organisations or applicants to meet all the needs of every beneficiary that you work with, but we are interested in supporting organisations that can demonstrate a good knowledge of where they can signpost to locally. So we want you to be connected locally. We also want you to be able to demonstrate a good knowledge of local issues. That's for children and young people and for organisations working in your locality. Next slide, please. Um, you'll also see from our website that we're interested in supporting work that builds resilience in young people, that builds a body of evidence, has been co-produced or has been developed by organisations with staff who have lived experience of the issues they address through their work. Next slide, please. Thank you. And this is just a reminder that we're happy to fund up to one time equivalent post as part of a program um, of work and on costs. Um, however, any award that we make cannot exceed 50% of an organization's turnover as seen in their last set of accounts. So just be aware of that. Um, we're happy to cover support costs such as clinical supervision and, and a range of other things that are detailed on the slide. Um, it's really for you to, to make a case and say we need this covered in order to deliver this piece of work to high quality. So all the information that I've covered today is available from our website and you can find that along with our contact details on the next slide. Thank you. I've, I've included the Twitter, is it a handle, I think, there, uh, just in case you are interested in following us on, twi on um, Twitter. Oh, no, you ha uh, yes, you have that. Um, okay, so I said at the beginning of my presentation that I had a surprise for you. So um, what I'm going to disclose this is hot off the press, is details of a brand new funding stream. This is not delivered by City Bridge Trust, but it's something that I've heard of last week. And I thought, given that you're all interested in funding around children and young people, that I would bring it to this meeting. Um, the, the funding strand is yet to be launched, um, but there is um, an element within it which focuses specifically on work with children and young people. So if we could go to the final slide, please. Thank you so much. So you can find info. Oh, oh, sorry. That's all right. People just might want to see the details on that last slide. Yeah, yeah. share it again. Apologies. That's all right. Um, so it's a funding um, program, which is called Propel. Um, and that is in red on that slide. 
if you actually could just make that full screen so people can see that information that would be really helpful is it not now because it's 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 is that can people see it yeah okay good um so this is um something that has developed from the work the collaborative funding work that happened in London during the pandemic where funders came together pooled their funds and distributed collaboratively um, and this is the next iteration of that it's called Propel um, and there are going to be three areas of funding as part of the Propel program building stronger communities offering a robust safety net and a new deal for children and young people. So I thought that would be very interesting to you today. Um, Kate and myself are not involved in the management uh, of this fund. So we're not you know, the best people to speak to it, but what I can direct you to is the London Funders website um, where you can find more information about it, about the two strands, the 50,000 per year through Explore Grants, which is for one year's funding or the D Deliver and Develop grants, which are for up to three years funding. Um, the other good thing about this is that they're offering webinars on the 11th and 13th of October, which you need to register for, but that would be a way of finding out more information about the fund and how you apply. So once again, go to the London Funders website, look at latest and then news, and then next steps, funder collaboration to find out more about this. I hope that's helpful. That's it from me. Um, and I believe I'm handing back to Sarah for questions, if there are any. I did see some popping up in the chat, but I haven't been able to see those. Okay. Um, okay, so there is Robin wanting to ask a question about the one full-time post. Uh-huh, yeah. Robin, would you like to ask the question? Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, so I've recently joined uh, Bromley and Croydon Women's Aid as fundraising manager. Um, and we are work with young people, so obviously really interested in what you're saying. Um, but we're also applying um, for another grant with the City Bridge Trust under um, tackling abuse and exploitation. Um, but it's quite a large project that we were looking for three full-time posts to be funded. Mm -hmm. um, but is the case that you just fund one? Mm -hmm. and then We would only fund one. Okay. And, and, and you can only hold time. one grant at any one time as well. Okay, that was my next question. Mm. <laughs> Do you, alongside that one full time, would you um, uh, fund part time salaries as well? Or we would fund up to one full time equivalent post that can be um, composed of a number of part time posts or one full time post. It just can only amount to one full time equivalent. All right. Okay. Thank you. Was there another question in the chat? I think there was, wasn't there? Uh, there was a question about recording. They were asking oh, okay. when we will be sharing the recording. Um, that will be shared hopefully today. I need to, you know, upload it um, and then send it through. Okay. Were there any other questions that came up from the information that I've shared with you today? Any feedback maybe from people who already applied? Oh, Selena, I was just about to ask you. So go on. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm just checking in terms of the criteria and you talk about girls and young women, mm -hmm. um, which is very broad. And thank you, <laughs> girls and young women. I just seen if there was any specific area or is that just a that then links to your criteria of build resistance, build body of evidence of what works and co-produced by young people and lived experience for staff. So I'm just trying to clarify, is there any, is it a particular aspect or it's just very generic? That's probably what I'm trying to say. So, so the, the funding um, that, we're work, that we're offering under support for children and young people yeah. is for work that addresses the needs of disadvantaged young women and girls. Okay. So it's not just sort of, you know, sports for women yeah. and girls or, yeah. you, you know, general, yeah. general stuff. It's work for, that meets the needs of disadvantaged young women and girls. And there would be scrutiny about how you're, defining and um, deciding that that a particular cohort of 
of this group are disadvantaged. Okay, no, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prose? Hi, sorry, my, answer, my question's already been answered. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. No worries. Okay, that looks like um, all questions have been answered. Thank you very much for coming. It was really useful. Um, I've got um, one last question was about um, timings. So I think it's an ongoing process and you put an application whenever you're ready, but um, how often do you meet and when during the year to look at applications? Yeah, it's, it's a slightly different process. Um, depending on how large the application is. Um, we're, we're essentially assessing continuously. Um, and um, our committee meets to look at larger applications every two months, um, but don't work towards a committee meeting um, because we are involved in assessment all the time. Um, it's currently taking us six months to process applications I'm going to be honest with you it, it is our aim to work at a faster pace but um, realistically that's what it's taking us at the moment and um, I just want to warn you of that I think that adds a level of complexity in that groups apply with a set of accounts and and all the information that's requested and then six months later you know the world could be very different. Um, so it's worth being aware of that when you apply and being prepared to um, you know, provide more up-to-date information as part of the assessment process. I see, and, and um, you said it's a brand new um, you know, uh, program you have for young people and children. Have you received any applications or is it um, you haven't, I mean, have you awarded anyone, any examples you can give projects that were awarded? I'm not, um, I have not been um, allocated any grants under this, any applications under this program to assess yet. Um, and I'm not, I don't think that any um, grants will have progressed through the system yet because it's new so um, it's I don't think they've been in the system long enough to be awarded as far as I'm aware Kate are you are you aware of any um, that have been made under this program no I, th I think that's right um, yet to be made some might be under assessment now mm. um, but yeah I don't think we've we've yet got examples of ones that have been awarded yet mm. okay okay well, thank you very much. It was super useful to have you today. I know you need to shoot off, so I won't, I won't keep you. Thank and you. Uh, we will be sending, uh, I think Kate, um, already sent, Kate already sent out the PowerPoint presentation with the oh. agenda this morning. If um, Otherwise, I'll, I'll do it myself with the recording of the session. Okay, well, um, if there are no more questions, I will sign out now. So okay. last time, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, good okay. luck, everyone. Take care. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye.